YouTube. It was in CBC News, the Canada broadcast. Um, that's our official like BBC. It's CBC. Canadian broadcast. And that was. And when did that? And when did that come out? That just so people can have a look. The the article was posted yesterday. It's okay, great. All right. Well, that, that gives some for people to go and have a look. Um, they can go and have a look at the article. Look, I really appreciate it, and I'm sorry we're going to have to keep going, but I think the no, thing. Go ahead. Thank no, you. No, no, no. But I just, the 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 great thing about it is, and it's an important point to 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 say. Our issue is and should always be with the system and not with the people. I know that there are corrupt people, and we get examples of that all the time. But but if you play the man or the woman, then you're missing the point. Um, the system wants you to go personal. The system wants you to be unhinged and to be vengeful because then it, it can justify itself by saying we are impartial judges. We are impartial uh, arbiters of the system. But the reality is that uh, the system is the problem and uh, the people in many cases are good uh, and we know the definition of evil. Is, you know, The evil ultimately is when good people you know, choose to do nothing. So. Look, thank you so much, Roberto, for sharing that with, with us. And I always appreciate, I'm sure people appreciate hearing that kind of news. Thanks again for that. Thank, thank you. Again. Bye-bye. Okay. Good on you. Look, uh, there were a couple more questions in the chat, and the chat's pretty lively tonight in the chat, so thank you. Um, the question here comes from Rich64, and then I look forward to, to, to getting through the calls. There are a few calls waiting, so let me get through it quickly. Uh, the question is, um, I've surrendered my full caps estate back to the Treasury. Uh, we'll be doing this in testimony, be uh, intermeddling, intermeddling with the estate or not. Um, look, I'm, I'm, you might want to get on the call and ask that because uh, the <laughs> there's some issue in saying that, that ultimately uh, you may uh, surrender a portion of your estate. You may surrender um, administration of your estate, but ultimately in their system, similar to the fact that, that you can't give up your body, I mean, if you give up your body, you go, that in their system, uh, your your domicile, your first estate is something that cannot ultimately be destroyed. I don't want to... to there is quite a bit of discussion on this because there's... Some of you may know there have been a number of people who have tried to collapse what they call the straw man, which was one way that we've described the estate or the legal person in the past, and it's shown that they can resurrect it. So the question is, is it ever really terminated? Um, the answer that I have seen in the Roman system is that no, they never ultimately terminate the estate. That's one of the issues we have. It's never killed off. Um, I want to get to the next caller, and please, um, this is um, Idaho. Idaho, can you hear us? Yes. Hi. Hi, how are you This is Harold. Hi, how are you going? Hi, and hello to everybody. Hi, Frank. This is my first call to you. I've, of course, listened in many times. Um, just thought I would let you let you know about a little situation I went to court um about a week ago last Friday and uh it was pretty interesting I've never really been to court in this capacity before but it was for driving without privileges and uh it was I I just thought I'd share with the group um some of the uh experience I had there <clears throat> it was it was a little disheartening before the fact because we had tried to file some paperwork with within the recorder's office and to no success and um so uh, just I let you know that it's uh I did manage to get a continuance on the case yes but uh it was it was just very interesting uh for somebody who's not used to going to court and seeing what takes place there uh, I found that the judge was certainly uh, kind of a let's make a deal kind of guy and he was <laughs> yeah yeah and he was did he have a nice place <laughs> yeah, 
it, it was just amazing. He was processing people about every two to three minutes. And uh, yeah. there was probably 30 people in the courtroom that had to sit in front of him. And prior to him coming in the room, paperwork was handed out to everybody. Your name was called, and the bailiff handed out paper uh, paperwork to everyone. And virtually everybody that I saw that went before me had signed this paperwork and handed it in as they went up to go in front of the judge. Yeah. Which, by the way, the judge did not have a nameplate. Uh, but that was all right. We kind of knew he was the judge, I guess. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it's quite interesting because everyone really signed this paperwork and handed it in just as they were asked to do so, because it was yeah. uh, it was paperwork that claimed that they knew their rights. And uh, what I found interesting about it was if if the person uh, stood up uh, in front of the judge, if, if they said that they were guilty, the, the judge then asked if they were coerced um, in any way. Um, oh, I forget some of his terminology, but he, he was truly asking that you admit your guilt in front of the court, and then he said, okay, so you have not been threatened, coerced in any way or, or any anything, and so you truly are guilty, and made him basically say, I am guilty, you know, and uh, I just found it quite a, quite a uh, learning lesson to go to court. I hope to not, not do it again, <laughs> but uh, with the paperwork, intend to file uh, you just dropped out there Gerald can you say that last sentence again you just dropped out oh I'm sorry yeah we hope to file paperwork into the case uh, before the next court date which is actually fairly soon too but uh, we were having problems filing this paperwork within the county uh, under um, without going into corporate law, we, we were hoping to file in public records, that is. And, um, yes. And so we were trying to file uh, warranty of authority and appointment of agent and so on, and uh, found that that was very hard to do here in this county. It was... Uh, I haven't quite well, figured out exact, exactly well, how we were going to do it. Go ahead. Well, look, first you Firstly, thank you, thank you for coming on the call, and, and I, I know that look, it, what makes it really useful and relevant for everyone is that they can hear from from different folk on on how they have experienced. So, if I can just wrap up a couple of things, if you're okay with this, one is uh, the demonstration you've had firsthand in the example of how difficult it is currently to get things on the public record. What, what I did say, you know, <laughs> I said a lot of things tonight, but uh, if you guys listen back to the audio, one of the things I mentioned that I think is very important for, for those that have the time to do the research is we've got to get the original public acts that show how the recorders' offices were established in the first instance because this is what is still supporting the corporate codes today. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And and secondly, we've got to show where it's a public official and not simply an agent. So the the county recorder is usually the clerk, is usually a number of other roles. So they're a public official. We've got to get the statutes that show the public officials have got to do their job. Armed with those two things, it's very easy to have prepared before you go into the county recorder's office is yeah. to have a sworn... Uh, affidavit, there you go, an affidavit, where you say, okay, well, if you want recorded, here's the here's the public statutes. If you're not going to record it, just sign this affidavit confessing you've committed a crime. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, it, it may come down to us simply having the paperwork and proof there to yeah. force them to do their job. Yeah? Right, right. That's well, look, good. thank you so much for your call. And I hope you continue to listen and, and participate as you did tonight. Well, thank you so much. Certainly I will. It's, it's a pleasure, Frank, and thank you.
Okay. Good night, mate. We'll get to the next caller. Being, uh, you've been waiting patiently. It's Batman, and I uh, look forward to speaking with you, Batman. I've just unmuted you. Can you hear us? Greetings. Yes, I hear you. Just fine at the moment. How you doing? Good. I'm going well. I just want to ask, could it be so simple as one laying claim to something creating a controversy? Um, yeah, if you look if you're if you're referring to the the, the very essence of, of their courts and being a money making issue, that's really all it is, is that they're there to make money off controversy. They need a controversy. Wait a minute, they need back a up here. Yeah. Let's back up here. You said money. What evidence do you have there's such a thing as money? Well, there certainly is in a in a court being a a place of business of the guild, there is certainly evidence of a thing called guilt. Is there? And that is equated to money. So there's certainly evidence well, the thing in the of conduct is. of business. Yeah. Yeah, you ever ask a judge, please tell me how to pay? I'd be glad to pay you. Well, yeah, I mean, I think what you're getting, well, I, in fact, I'm not quite sure what you're getting to, so I'm not going to presume, but uh, you're, you're right that the presumption is that the payment of guilt is with money. Yeah, so That's who's right. The yeah, who's the problem? You walk into the courtroom, somebody calls out a name, and you say, yeah, that's my name. Did you or did you not just bring a controversy before the court? Well, you're, again, uh, I'm not kind of presuming where you're getting at, but in previous calls and certainly on the material that is on Eucadia, we make clear that the underlying principle of court is the sacrament of penance where you confess to the crime, you confess to the controversy. So yeah. in a sense, yes, the, the introduction of a, of a controversy into the court uh, compels you to compels effectively you? be the carrier of it. Wait a minute. Compel Sorry? What do you mean by compels you? How are you compelled to do anything? Other than whether you have a true belief or a false belief in that, now, now that's a whole other question there too. Well, again, you, you're opening up door after door after door. If, if, if I use the word compel, and I could have used a softer word, but I could have used the word compel or coerce. Uh, coercion uh, and compulsion. I, I would suggest to you that if you if if someone has never faced the system before that the day the police come and uh, serve a warrant on you, they may or may not arrest you, or one receives a summons in the mail that, that says if you do not attend, you will be, that that is absolutely a form of coercion. Is it? Uh, could the, could right. the whole, oh, wait a minute, back up though. Could the whole thing be one's assumption that they're serving a warrant on you, or could they just be asking, does anybody here have claim to this name? Well, again, I mean, I refer back to um, many, many previous calls. Uh, much of this ground has been covered before, and I refer to the canons that make very clear that that the very essence of a summons and indeed the very essence of a warrant is based on presumptions, and indeed the very essence of the entire system is based on presumptions. Uh, I, if, that, I if that is a point you're making, I'm in complete agreement because this is something we've said over and over again on these calls. Yeah, and the, here's the point I, I'd like to relay to you. Now, I'll try to make it short and let you carry on or whatever if, if I am uh, impeding anything. But the point of the matter is, could it be we're the ones making the assumption and, and they're just acting accordingly? Could we be laying blame on our brothers and sisters when we're the problem? Something to consider. I'm so glad you say that. And I didn't say it tonight probably because I've been saying it every other night. <laughs> but I've said, and I said this, you know, in, in, in great patient last week, that the whole system, the whole system gets away with what they're doing because ultimately we are to blame. If we don't go and read, we're to blame. If we don't go and...